Welcome to this celebration of Holy Communion according to the Book of Common Prayer on this festival of Mary Magdalene. After the Gospel reading, I shall read from a homily by Gregory the Great. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Elizabeth, our Queen and Governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour and humbly obey her in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, whose Son restored Mary Magdalene to health of mind and body, and called her to be a witness to his resurrection, forgive us our sins, we beseech thee, and heal us by thy grace, that we may serve thee in the power of his risen life, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The portion of scripture appointed for the epistle is from the Book of Wisdom. I will rise and go about the city, in the streets and in the broad ways I will seek him whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. The watchmen that go about the city found me, to whom I said, Saw ye him whom my soul loveth? It was but a little that I passed from them, but I found him whom my soul loveth. I held him and would not let him go until I had brought him into my mother's house and into the chamber of her that conceived me. I charge you, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, by the rose and by the hinds of the field, that ye stir not up nor awake my love till he please. Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm, for love is strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be contemned. Here endeth the epistle. Alleluia, alleluia, full of grace are thy lips, because God hath blessed thee for ever. Alleluia. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, one of the Pharisees desired Jesus that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. And when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this was that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed five hundred piece and the other fifty. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, 
thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman, and said unto her, Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house, thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment, wherefore I give unto thee. I, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, but whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. A reading from a homily of Gregory the Great. Mary Magdalene had been a sinner in the city. She loved Jesus, the truth, and washed away the stain of her wickedness with her tears. In this way the word of truth was fulfilled. Her many sins have been forgiven because she has shown great love. Her sins had indeed chilled her heart, but now she was burning inside with unquenchable love. When she came to the tomb and did not find the Lord's body, she imagined that it had been taken away, and she went and reported it to the disciples. They came and saw, and they believed that it had actually happened as she had told them. Then the Gospel narrative continues. The disciples went away again to their homes, but Mary stayed behind, standing by the tomb, weeping. At this point, let us pause and reflect upon Mary's state of mind, upon the intense love of this woman who would not leave the Lord's tomb even after the disciples had gone away. She carried on seeking him whom she had not found, weeping as she searched and ablaze with love. She yearned for him whom she believed had take, been taken away. Thus it happened that she was alone when she saw Jesus, she who had stayed behind to seek him. From this we learn that at the heart of every good work is to be found the virtue of perseverance. Indeed, the lips of truth itself have said, those who persevere to the end will be saved. As she wept, she stood, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. Mary had already seen that the tomb was empty and she had told the disciples that the Lord had been taken away. So why did she stoop down again? Why did she want to look for a second time? The truth is that it is never enough for a lover to look merely once. The sheer intensity of love will not allow a lover to give up searching. Mary had sought and found nothing, but she persevered, and therefore she found the object of her love. While she was seeking, her unfulfilled desires grew stronger and stronger, until at their most intense moment they were quenched in the embrace of him she sought. Holy desires grow with waiting until they fade through waiting when they cannot be genuine. This must be the quality of love that inflames anyone who reaches out for the truth. It is why David says in the Psalms, My soul is thirsting for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? And the church says in the Song of Songs, I am wounded by love, and again my soul faints within me. Woman, why are you weeping? Whom do you seek? Mary is asked the cause of her sorrow so that her desire may increase, for she names the one she seeks. She discovers herself burning with yet greater love for him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. First of all, he called her woman, the common address at that time for one of her sex, and she did not recognise him. But now he calls her by her own name, as if to say, recognise the one who recognises you. You will remember that the Lord had said to Moses, I know you by name. Moses was his own name, and the Lord knew, told him that he knew him by name, as if saying, I do not know you in some general way, I know you personally. In the same way addressed by her own name, Mary too recognised her creator and immediately calls out, Rabboni, that is teacher. Outwardly, it, it was he 
who was the object of her search, but inwardly it was he who was leading her to search for him. The Offertory Gracious Lord, look upon these gifts which in remembrance of blessed Mary Magdalene we lay before thee and offer up for our offences through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord God of all creation, through thy goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given in human hands and made. For us it will become the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. By the mystery of this water and this wine, may we share in the divinity of whom we harmed himself to share in our humanity, that we should share in his divinity. Blessed art thou, Lord God of all creation, through thy goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it will become the cup of salvation. Blessed be God for ever. Lord, cleanse me from my sin, and not wash away my iniquities. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church, militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed. Grant under her whole counsel and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them, who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and work, walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them most grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. 
So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy to give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel command us to continue our perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. body of our Lord Jesus Christ which was given for thee and his blood which was shed for thee preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life receive this holy communion in remembrance that Christ died for thee and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thanked. Our Father, which art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we the humble servants entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son Jesus Christ and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesu Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost be among you and remain with you always. Amen.